Hey guys, Nick Drosos, Dr. Andrew Steinberg, and welcome to another episode of Have the Balls to Talk About It. So Andrew, we did an episode on Peronis. Yes. This was a while back, and yep. we got a lot of comments, a lot of questions, and um, we're going to do a part two on it. So what are we going to talk about? I'm going to talk about two different uh, therapies which uh, you know, may be helpful in the treatment of Peyronie's disease, and, and it's shockwave and PRP treatment. Uh, there's a couple of reasons why I wanted to talk about it. One is because they're coming more popular, and there's a, a lot of debate of how well they work and, and who's the best patients for them. And the other one is that one of the hopes that was coming up recently, if you remember, Peyronie's is scar tissue that yes. forms collagen, which causes a curve in penis yes. and erectile dysfunction and... and, and um, you know, pain, and uh, is that there was one of the hopes that was coming was this medication called Zyoflex. It's a collagenase, so it we inject it into the collagen and it melts it. It, it helps with the curve and and the, and that hard plaque there. So the problem was is that for I don't know which reasons it could have been financial with the company. It was pretty much removed from the market all across the world except for the states. No way. Yeah. So we had it here for, I don't know, a year or two, well, and I was injecting I, patients. Sorry, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Why everywhere except the U.S.? Is there a reason? Yes, there is a reason, but I don't know it. Uh, okay. I, I believe it was financial. and um, I, but, I it, but did it work? Um, yeah, it worked. The studies are great. Uh, you know, were my personal experience with it and my patients. I didn't think it was miraculous. Okay. I mean, some patients still went on to need surgery, which is the end point. Um, but, uh, but in any case, you know, we got a letter one day and, uh, you know, you guys have two month, two couple of months more to order the medications and that's it. We're pulling it from Canada. And then I heard that other countries were, were in a similar situation. So I went back because, you know, you need a lot of the oral medications we were taking in the past have very limited success, right? Some of them may have some, some good, uh, some good effect, uh, pentoxifiling, colchicine, and so on. I think we talked about it in the other video. But uh, between that and surgery, there wasn't a whole lot more. There's a, the penile traction device, which I've recommended. So this is this is the Cadillac version, Restorex. Uh, why is it Cadillac? Most of the versions, you put your penis in, in here, and it, it catches it like that. Uh, and that, most that, of the, that looks painful, Andrew. Is it? Uh, well, you, you, not when used properly. So most of them just stretch the penis straight. Okay, you pull it until wow. your penis is taut. Okay, this one, the beauty of, of this one is if you have a, a curvature on your penis that goes up, for example, you do this and you curve it down. Okay. Okay, and you have to wear this for about 30 minutes to 60 minutes a day. Okay, and this, studies have shown, can uh, decrease the curvature of your penis by wow. you know 20% in some studies. It can actually increase the length of your penis by one and a half centimeters. Um, so no injections, no nothing, you just... Yeah, yeah, this alone. Now, I use this as part of a, uh, you know, a multidisciplinary approach, oral medications, uh, penile traction devices, and what we're about to talk about now, which is shockwave and PRP platelet-rich plasma, okay? So let's, let's break them up. Let's start off with shockwave. Now, shockwave was initially studied probably 10 years ago or more, because, you know, we use shockwave to break kidney stones. So someone had the idea, let's use shockwave on this plaque mm. to try to break up that plaque and then, you know, get rid of the, get rid of the problem. So uh, what we did see in, in several studies is it didn't do a whole lot for the curve of the penis. Mm. Okay. But uh, there are some studies and different studies show different things, but some studies show that it does help. When people are having pain, it helps improve the pain. Don't know the exact mechanism, but I know you know shockwave is used in other physiotherapists uh, for joint pain and so on. So there is a mechanism um, there, but it does help with pain. Uh, some studies show that it does reduce the size of the plaque, okay. even though it doesn't change the curve. Uh, and and you know who cares if you have the size of the plaque if it functions well? Well, some it bothers some people. Yeah. Um, and finally, erectile dysfunction. Some studies, you know, we know we use it for erectile dysfunction shockwave, whether you believe it or not. Again, there are some people who believe that the difference isn't significant, but, um, but, but there are some many studies which show that it's a significant improvement. So uh, I've been telling patients exactly that. Um, if you, you know, want to go for surgery, uh, you know, 
then that can be done. The disadvantage of surgery is when you actually, in most kind of surgery, don't remove the plaque. So the plaque is still there, you just shorten the other side. Mm. So that causes a shortening of the penis. It keeps it straight, but you're still left with the plaque and your penis is a little bit shorter. So Shorter meaning you lose size in it? You lose size. Yeah. You lose, I'm pretty you know, sure no man inch. wants that, right? Yeah, so. yeah exactly. So uh, you can remove the plaque, but then you're left with a little hole. You've got to put a patch on it, whether it's a graph or, or something from you know, uh, your, yeah. the lining of your mouth and you, you pack it on. Um, so it is a much bigger surgery, risk of erectile dysfunction and so on. So you know, I tell patients, like, let's, we, we know there are some studies which say that it works. Um, maybe it won't change your curvature a whole lot, uh, but this will. So let's do combination. This will help with the curve a little bit. This will help with the pain. This will help with the erections and will get you a little bit better. Um, so I recommend it. We've seen some good results. I'm not doing a randomized study with, uh, uh, you know, with a placebo, but there are some studies which have been done comparing shockwave therapy uh, to, a, to a sham, what we call a sham yeah. treatment. And it shows uh, some benefits. So I'm a big fan. Uh, if done properly, there's different protocols, and we don't know which is the best. How many shocks? Who, and so who, on. who decides, Andrew? Like, if a patient comes, do you decide, or does the patient decide? Well, this is I, the treatment I would prefer. Yeah. Of. So I say, look, we got A, B, C, D, E. Okay. Uh, we can do this, and then go to this, and then go to that. We can do A, B, C. Uh, we can go A, B, C, and if it doesn't get better, we go to E. And, and we, you know, you go over the risks, you go over the benefits. And uh, most patients, in the end of the day, want to avoid surgery. What I also tell them is that if we can get the penis a little bit straighter, yeah. a little bit longer with, with, with this, um, then if you still do need a surgery, you're, you're starting with a less curve point. and a little bit longer, and then maybe whatever surgery has to be done will be that much less yeah. and will cause less deformity in that aspect. So, you know, um, that's just my personal views on yeah. it. Uh, so again, it's a it's a it's a group decision. It's a t team decision, and uh, and uh, you know often when explained properly, most many people will go for a more conservative approach and then go for the surgery afterwards. Some patients say, you know what, I don't want to waste my time. Straight this is slow me down. I can't have sex. How do I get in and out the fastest way that I can get a straight penis and back, back to having yeah. sex? Surgery. Do you do the surgery here? Andrew? Uh, I don't do it. It's my colleague who does it. Okay. And uh, how long does it take? In the hospital. No, uh, it's uh, forty-five minutes, an hour. Are you asleep? Uh, you could be frozen? asleep, or you can be uh, under general. There, there are some people who have started doing it under local. Okay. So, you know, advantages and disadvantages. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So the next one is PRP. Uh, PRP, as I've said many times, yeah. is platelet-rich plasma. We take the blood from your arm. Separate the red blood cells and the white blood cells, and you're left with that golden yellow liquid, yeah. the plasma, full of platelets. And the platelets have the growth factors and the healing factors. So there have been a couple of studies which have injected, like we injected that medication I told you before, into the plaque. We inject the, the, the PRP into the plaque and uh, in the hopes that the healing process will decrease the plaque. Uh, there have been uh, some studies, and there's even a, a decent one, which has done half the patients got PRP, half of them got salt water injection, oh, wow. saline. That's okay. the placebo. And uh, the results were quite impressive in this, in this single study. And, um, and it wasn't perfect. You know, for example, uh, a decrease in the, in, the, in the curvature was noted in 50% of men. Well, that's only half the men getting the injection. Uh, however, if you look at the saline group, it was like 20%. So, so the, the difference between the two groups. So again, when you, you read these information to the patient, you say, well, look, if we do it, according to this study, at least there's a 50% chance yeah. you're going to get better. And if we don't do it, well, there's a 0% chance you're going to, right? Yeah, if you don't, so it's just a matter of what your expectations are. I never, you know, I'm not going to tell a guy, you know, you're 99% going to get way yeah. better with this. Not true. So 50% of uh, patients had improvement in, 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 in the curvature. Uh, they, they, there was a, a large difference between the two groups in the plaque size, in the pain, and in the erectile function. So it was a pretty impressive study. Uh, I, I did a search uh, last week, actually, and there's currently about four or five studies undergoing on. And these are 
you know, real studies, uh, you know, um, some one of them even funded by uh, the NIH and a great center in, in Miami. Um, so there's enough interest in it, mm -hmm. and I guess there's enough belief that there's a good chance that this is going to work, that there's at least five or six decent studies going on across the world, just starting to recruit patients. And these studies take a couple of years till you get enough patients to analyze and so on. So um, I think it's exciting. I think these are two great options. Uh, I was doing it, I started to do it a couple of years ago. We stopped when the Zyaflex medication came in, and now I restarted again a year ago when the Zyaflex was removed from the Canadian market. And, um, you know, experimental, yes. Uh, some studies to back up the use of this, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, like I say to patients, if you want to do something to try to get us, to prevent us from going to surgery, um, I think these are completely reasonable, minimal side effects, um, very safe. You know, one of them is just sound waves. Uh, there's no mm -hmm. downside to that one. Um, they are costly at times because they're not covered in any way. Um, and the PRP, we're using your own platelets. It's been shown in many studies and in, injected into many parts of the body, face, yeah. joints, dental. We've done a lot of episodes on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's safe, bottom line. You don't have an allergic reaction to your own blood, so yeah, your own cool. blood products. So um, I think it's exciting. Uh, you know, we have to have caution and there's some, I've seen some advertisements from some shockwave companies and they show a penis like curved like that and then they say after like a normal yeah. penis with no plaque and that's where it gets a really bad name, some of yeah. these therapies. So go to someone reputable, learn the advantages and the disadvantages, learn, uh, you know, what the limitations of the current studies are and make a decision for yourself but uh, get the proper and, and pick a good professional to be sure before you do any pick of this 100 percent. so so i hope you guys enjoyed this episode if you have any comments any questions leave them in the box and make sure to subscribe to hit the bell and remember to have the balls to talk about it <laughs>